Hi, my name's Neil, and first of all, a very happy new year to everyone. I hope you all had a really nice time, and I wish you all the very best of 2019. In today's video, I'm going to be talking you through how I took and then edited this photograph from Holly and Tim's wedding just a few days before Christmas. For this photograph, I used one off-camera speed light, a MagMod modifier, a special piece of glass, and most importantly of all, a Christmas tree. So without any further ado, let's crack on. So before I start the video properly, I just want to talk to you a little bit about photographs like this, which is obviously a very creative photograph and one where I've really experimented and tried something new which I haven't tried before and I love to do that. But one thing to point out with photographs like this is that I see them very much as being bonus shots at the end of the day. So the vast, vast majority of the wedding day to me is about capturing real emotion and real moments in a documentary fashion. I don't like to get too involved in the wedding day at all. I want to be an observer of the wedding day rather than someone who is making things happen on a wedding day. So as I say, I like taking photographs like this, but they are very much a bonus shot at the end of the day rather than something which I'm relying on. And that's really key. I find for me to be as creative as I can be, I need to be able to take images like this with no pressure. And I let my bride and grooms know that. They, they're aware that I will probably grab them at the very, very end of a wedding day just to try something new. Sometimes it works and I'd like to think this one did, which I'm going to talk through today. Sometimes it doesn't. But the important thing is I'm just trying new things and just to start off the video to demonstrate that I'm going to show you a very very short slideshow of some of my favorite photographs from Holly and Tim's wedding to give you an idea of what the majority of my wedding coverage looks like and as you're going to see although I often show images like the one I'm going to talk you through today the vast majority of images which I take on a wedding day are documentary in other words i'm just observing the day and capturing real moments and real emotion and that ultimately is what a wedding day is all about for me so just before i talk you through how i took the creative image here's a very short slideshow from polly and tim's wedding which will just give you an idea about what their wedding day was like and hopefully how their wedding day felt So I hope you enjoyed that little slideshow and it gives you a better idea about my overall wedding day coverage. So when it comes to the creative photographs, I like to take these at the very end of the day when mentally I feel as though I finished my job because when I feel like that, then I have no more pressure on me. And I find for me personally, that when I don't have that pressure, that's when I can be really, really creative and try things without, without the fear of it not working. And what I will do is I start by walking around the wedding venue, trying to see areas or objects, things that I can use, which are going to give me really good potential for creative images. And in this case, at Holly and Tim's wedding, when I walked outside, I saw this really huge and really nice Christmas tree. So I, I immediately knew that that is what I was going to use. So then the next stage is what am I going to do? Now I could have taken something a bit more obvious, couple in front of the Christmas tree, but ultimately that would have been a bit boring, I find. So I was trying to think, what can I try and do with this, which is unique? which I haven't done before. And I thought by getting almost into the Christmas tree with my camera and putting the lens right up against the fairy lights, I knew that would give me really interesting foreground bokeh. And that's what I ended up doing. But as I always do with images like this, I try and think, 
okay, that's, that's okay, but what can I then do to take it to the next level, take it to a level which I haven't done before? And to help me with this, I will often use things which I have in my camera bag. You may want to watch a video which I uploaded a few weeks ago, which was the top five things which I have in my camera bag, which are a little bit more unusual, which I'll link to just up here. Because in that video, I show you things which I have in my bag, which can just elevate a photograph from, from good to, to like very different and really creative. And that's exactly what I did for this image. But rather than use something which I talked through in that video, I use this, which is called a fractal. Uh, now this is a really cool thing. Now I love using this, it gives a really cool effect. When I put the fractal right up against my camera lens, it creates a really cool sort of kaleidoscope effect, which I really like, and it's something very, very different. I thought I'm going to try something a little bit safer with this shot, and then I'm going to use this to try and create something which I didn't even know what it would look like. And that's what I love. I love the fact that I'm not even sure what the effect is going to give me. The key thing and the most enjoyable thing for me is just the experimentation. So you can see the location for the shot here with the huge Christmas tree. As I wanted to expose for the fairy lights, which were the brightest part of the scene, everything else would become very underexposed. This meant that I would have to light up the bride and groom using a speed light. I then have to decide whether I front light or back light the couple or both. In this instance, I decided to backlight the couple. To do this, I placed one speed light behind where the bride and groom would stand at half power. To limit the spill of the light, I also placed a magma grid to the speed light as well. The grid would ensure that the light from the flash would only hit the couple and not the wall or the floor, which in turn would lead to a much cleaner image. I then walked over to the Christmas tree to take some test shots. As you can see here, even on this iPhone video, when I underexposed for the lights, the potential of the shot starts to be seen. I decided to use my 35mm lens for this shot because I find that this is the best focal length for shooting through things which I place in front of the lens, which in this example was the fractal. Even though this video was only taken on my iPhone, you can still see here the effect which the fractal gives. Focusing on the bride and groom using the fractal is actually quite easy because the middle part of the glass is clear. Having now taken the photograph, here is the raw of my favourite file. I shot this image using my Sony A9. To take this photograph, I shot at 200th of a second, which was as fast a shutter speed as I could use, bearing in mind that my Photic Strato triggers do not allow me to use high speed sync. I used a wide aperture of f1.8, because the wider the aperture, the better the foreground bokeh would look, and my ISO was 64, which was as low as I could go. I used this very low ISO to help me underexpose the image as much as I could. One thing to know is that although the overall composition worked really well, on this file, the moment between the bride and groom wasn't quite as good as I would have liked. So I also brought a second raw file, this one, into Lightroom as well, because I wanted to use their faces from this second raw file over the composition of the first file. You'll see more about how I did this when I open up the images in Photoshop. Once in Lightroom, the first thing I do is apply my preset. I start editing the image by initially only paying attention to the bride and groom, ignoring the outer areas at this stage. I did this by increasing the exposure, white balance, clarity and vibrancy. I then used the radial filter to select an area around the bride and groom and then untick the invert mask box. This means that everything I change now will affect everywhere except for the bride and groom. I then made some changes which softened the outer areas slightly to draw the eye more to the bride and groom. I felt that this was all I needed to do in Lightroom, so now it was time to open up the image in Photoshop. As I mentioned earlier, although I like the composition of this file, I felt as though the moment between Holly and Tim wasn't quite as good as it could be. However, as I often take quite a few shots when taking creative portraits like this, I had another very similar raw file where the moment between the bride and groom was much better. So using the clone stamp tool, I copied the faces of Holly and Tim from the second photograph onto the composition of the first. Now I really don't like to do this because I do feel as though it's cheating and I always strive to get as much right in camera as I can but it's something I will do if I feel as though it will make a significant improvement to the final image which I give to the bride and groom. I then expanded the image and re-cropped so that the bride and groom are more central in the frame before finally painting over any distracting clutter using a black paintbrush.
And with that, the image is finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. As always, if you have, I would really appreciate it if you could please leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. So thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and all, all Sorry.